Welcome guys, it's that time of year again, and it's my 2020 game room tour. And there's been a lot of changes this year. Every year I always think to myself that there's not going to be a lot of changes enough to make this video. And every year I turn back and I'm like, nope, I was wrong again. And this year we did a full-on makeover of the, of the movie room as far as how everything was laid out. All the collectibles and stuff. We added more additions to the 90s area that we walked down. Uh, we added some, some stuff in this room. And we even added a whole entire room. To the actual game room a separate room completely this year um so just a lot a lot of stuff to get through uh so let's go ahead and get into the video game in tech eating brekkie is the game in tech going for a brekkie is the game in tech game in tech is the game in tech game in techie all right guys so here we are with the game room tour for 2020 we've made it to 2020 we have a brand new game room tour here a lot of changes a lot to get through Let's go ahead and get started. But before we go into detail, let's give you guys a overall look at everything in the whole entire game room uh, with a quick shot of it. Alright guys, so that was a little overview of the whole entire game room. So as you can see, there's a lot of things to show, a lot of new things, a brand new room this year even. So let's dive right into this. So we start here in the 90s corner. So this area has gotten some attention from last year, but this is one of the projects that I will continue to be working on, continue to add stuff to this area. Um, you know, one day I'd like to fill every single piece of this wall as you're going down 90s area like completely. So this is still uh, definitely not one of the rooms that I would consider finished. Uh, this is a room that I still have to go back to, but we did add some stuff. We added, you know, some things hanging on the wall with these pops. Uh, one of the things that I was excited to add were these two shelves here, which let me bring uh, some of the 90s stuff that I had in the other room, which kind of made no sense because I had two 90s areas. I basically had a glass shelf area in the other side. And also had this here so I finally put some shelves up and put a bunch of stuff on the other side you can see a bunch of 90s collectibles uh, from my childhood are literally all over this place uh, we even got a sidekick uh, over there which is in the 2000s but close enough um, just all my childhood is here uh, you know from hey Arnold we got my favorite can't skip this my favorite boy meets world scene right there if you guys know what episode that is without looking it up Comment that down below. Uh, that's my favorite all-time show. My favorite all-time episode of that show. Uh, we brought some Amiibos up here. Um, so a lot of cool collectibles in here. Uh, even got some autographs from the Power Rangers, you know, signed by Austin St. John, the Red Ranger. You can see this one here is signed by Greg Berg, the guy who uh, voiced Donatello. Uh, this one over here, signed by Peter and Jumanji. All original autographs, so that's cool. Uh, got some... Cool pops there, Kelly Kapowski from Saved by the Bell, and Rachel Green from Friends. Some of these pops are hard to find, especially those two. Um, got a Furby sitting over there. And then as we come down, we enter where a lot of changes have happened. The movie room is basically 100% complete as far as to my liking to what I'm actually looking to do with it. Doesn't mean it will never change again, uh, but I have no, like, I'm not concentrating on this room at all. Uh, this room is, you know, 100% exactly what I wanted. This is the room that got the most concentration in the last year for the last eight months from start of January to like May, uh, till like July, I think. 
this room got all the attention. So let's start right here in the corner. You see Ninja Turtles that we added a figure here. Uh, nice tall figure of Ninja Turtles. Coming around here, comic book rack. Uh, but not just comics. These are comics right here in the beginning. Uh, but, and if you turn it over here, we got some magazines, retro gaming magazine, uh, the Nickelodeon magazine, who could forget about that? Uh, J14 classic, the Disney Adventures one, those are classic as well. And if you move over here, you got the Pokemon, uh, sorry, Nintendo Power magazine that's sitting here. And the Xbox official magazine and the PlayStation magazine. So I wanted to make this like the reading corner of everything that I grew up with as far as, you know, comics, magazines and stuff. So we got some cool stuff there and we got the Hulk there protecting it, which is really cool that I was able to find that. Uh, this corner over here hasn't changed. This is the uh, little Giants area. So have that there. And then this little hockey shelf that we built for some of these collectibles. So that's really cool. And can't have a game room or a man cave without that sign. Uh, this is the room that I'm obviously going to show you last. We will get to this. Um, over here, I had a perfect idea for what, what to actually do with all my Disney Infinity figures. Because I love these figures and I love the game still. Marvel Battlegrounds is an awesome, awesome, basically Power Stone type device. Or type game. And these are all the Marvel characters that you can use. I added... Uh, as much of the order as I could from the movies, you know, starting from the top to the bottom as, as best as I could, and um, added this little Marvel entrance here, and uh, some of the ones that couldn't fit there are sitting up there as well. And of course we got the Star Wars Darth Vader and Stormtrooper. Really cool because you can turn them on and they, as you walk by them, will move if you need them to. I don't think they're turned on currently. Oh, actually, they are. So you can see. Sir, resistance fighters. I thought he was turned on as well, but maybe not. There you go. So those stuffs are that stuff's really cool. Let's turn these off before I forget to turn them off again. Uh, but those two figures are really cool. Got those on a really good deal because these are really hard to find and expensive when you do find them because they're over four feet. I think they're four feet tall. So those things are awesome. Moving on over here. Not any changes over here. Same poster, the video game high school. Uh, that's signed by the whole entire cast as you can see down there. Really, really good show that you guys should watch if you're a fan of video games. And of course the entrance to the movie theater. Over here. Can't have a movie theater without a nice popcorn machine. So, of course, we got that sitting there. And also, a giant concession stand with all our favorite candy. This thing is always hard to keep stock. You can see those red pezzes are already gone over there. I'll have to replace those. But try to keep that in stock as much as possible when people come over so they can grab their snacks. Even when we're not having movie night. Then we got the uh, snow cone machine here. Cotton candy machine. And the hot dog maker sitting right here, along with the napkins and stuff. And Mickey and Minnie, just to remind us that we're in the movie. And, uh, of course, the projector sitting on top. This is an Epson, uh, the Epson 5500, I believe, is what this is. And then we got the hot dog, uh, popcorn, and soda pop decorations there in the back. Along with the cinema sign and nice board over there that we sometimes write things on just to have some fun. Right now we have the classics. Uh, scent machines or scent that all these things used to cost back in the 80s and 90s. Here's a new thing that I'm really proud of adding this year, and this is my Game of Thrones wall. This is the first wall I was done in this room over the last eight months, and really proud of it because there's some really cool stuff in here. Uh, of course, the big one is the Game of Thrones fully signed by the cast. Not everyone, of course. Uh, I wish I had um, Daenerys Targaryen, uh, you know, sign this, and of course, uh, she has not. But this is the crowd that has signed it. And that's everyone on there that has signed this. So that's really cool. And also, it was signed also by um, a couple of other people that are not on that picture. Because they just weren't in that picture. Um, but really, really cool. And then we got some of the bottles that they released that were, you know, special. That they were releasing with the Game of Thrones. The White Walker bottle in there and stuff. The House Targaryen and stuff. Uh, the Dragon. Uh, the Book. Nice little quotes from the movies, or sorry, from the TV show. 
and Fire and Blood custom sign that we got. So that looks really cool. Some shot glasses, we even got the actual throne sitting there. Blu-ray, of course, and we even got the uh, thing that actually, if you, you know, those things that you twist to actually hear the theme song. So that's really cool as well. Uh, so, of course, the Game of Thrones wall. One of my favorite shows ever, even though there's a lot of controversy of the last season. Still doesn't change how much I enjoyed that show every, every night watching it. And then we got these two guys right here we added as well. Superman and Batman. I needed some DC in this room. Uh, Marvel and DC need to be represented, which they were not represented last year in this room at all. Uh, they are now, so I'm happy that these two guys are here with us. Um, so that's really cool. Movie room, of course. The projector screen go is all there. And uh, we got the couches and stuff. Let's go ahead and wrap ourselves around. We'll start right here in this corner. So over here in this corner, we got the Bud Light sign. I love this thing. It basically connects to the internet uh, with an app and everything. So every time the Devils score or any hockey team you want to set, it goes off by itself and lets me know what they scored. Or you can manually hit the button. And it will go off as well. But really cool that it actually goes off on its own. And then the game uh, zone. Oh, and then, of course, we got the speakers here. We'll talk about the speakers here in a minute. And we got a nice poster here. Top 100 movies bucket list. All the movies that you need to scratch off and watch. Because uh, I have not watched a lot of movies, as I've been told many times by a lot of people. So that's something I'm trying to... Obviously, that poster's uh, cool to be able to check things off as you watch them. Uh, this area here has been completely, completely changed. Everything here is brand new in some sort of way, and it starts here. Um, so basically what I did is each little corner is dedicated to, to it. So you can see here, that little corner on the left is Ready Player One. This middle section in the back there is Wreck-It Ralph. And this little corner here is Harry Potter. So... The poster was already here. We got the Ready Player One poster, but all this is brand new. We added the keys from the movie. Of course, we can't forget about those. The two pops. We extra life token. Uh, the IMAX ticket. A couple of buttons. The Obviously, the uh, the adventure Atari game that's in there from the movie. Uh, the actual 4K, uh, 4K Blu-ray sitting there. And the 3D Blu-ray, because I'm a big fan of 3D movies. And this is a 3D projector in here. Uh, and a 4K enhancement projector. So... Definitely have to have both. And, of course, the book and the art of Ready Player One. So I'm really a big fan of this movie. Of course, as a video game fan, no surprise to anybody. Here in the center, we have Wreck-It Ralph. And, of course, we have the uh, two big Wreck-It Ralph figures along with their minifigures there from Disney Infinity. Uh, we have the 3D Blu-ray sitting back there. And the little Fix-It Feel It little arcade that actually does work. And some pops here from movies and TV shows that I really like. Uh, over here, we have Harry Potter, and uh, a lot of cool stuff they were able to add. We did go to Portugal this year, so we were able to visit some of the locations where she actually wrote the book that a lot of people like. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see in those pictures, but it's really cool. That fountain there that's like inspired from Harry Potter. Um, so some really cool stuff that we were able to get. Here's me in front of the uh, famous cafe. And here's the bookstore and stuff. So some really cool stuff that we were able to get. Here's the book actually from that we got from over there that's in Portuguese from when we went to Portugal that they sell in that store. Uh, Harry Potter, the original. And then, of course, the Pops. Can't forget about that. The Tawans. The uh, houses are sitting over there. And then this hat is really cool. You can actually put it on and it actually sorts you to a house uh, if you put it on and you, you know, turn it on. And then, of course, we also have this thing over here again, just like the Game of Thrones one where you can spin it around and hear the actual theme song. And, of course, you can't forget about the Blu-ray set. I've been wanting to get the 4K Blu-ray set uh, on actual, you know, Blu-ray uh, to get the Atmos in this in this room. We'll talk about it in a minute with the speakers that we did. And finally able to get those in here. Those are really expensive, so happy to add that to the collection here as well. All of these have been reorganized, even though the games are all the same. Everything here was reorganized uh, from last year. So we got some new collectibles sitting in all the different areas. Uh, things were rearranged, showing off, you know, some of my favorite games from each of these systems. So you can see how that is there. Then we got the little Switch collection going. The Wii U. PS3. So some cool stuff that I did with these shelves here, but the shelves I'm really proud of 
are these glass cabinets. So right here you can see, this is just a bucket with all my t-shirts, all my gaming t-shirts that I wear throughout videos and stuff like that are all sitting in this corner. I made this little Borderlands 2 section over here. Um, so that's really cool to represent how much I like Borderlands. But these shelves is where I spent not only a lot of time, but a lot of money uh, and collectibles and stuff. This is where a majority of it came from. If you guys have been watching my gaming collection series, this is where a majority of it went from. And this is the Xbox side of things. Uh, so you can see here on the Xbox, we start with uh, the controllers up there. We even got a Microsoft Zoom sitting back there, which is really cool. And here we got the Gears of War section here on top. We got the actual game signed by the whole Gears of War cast back there. Uh, the statue, you know, uh, the pop that's signed by the person who, um, you know, I was Dom, who actually voiced him. So that's really cool. Little Xbox controller. And little figures and stuff from the new uh, new Gears of War game. So that's really cool. Proud of that shelf. Next shelf, of course, is Halo. We got the famous Halo statue there with the all the figurines and stuff. We got the music uh, soundtrack on vinyl. We got an art book sitting there in the corner. We got the Halo 2 guide. So some cool stuff in there. Uh, really proud of this shelf here. As a as a person who really likes Rockstar, you know those are just are sitting here with a representation of all my favorite games from Rockstar, like the iFruit uh, case. We got the little figurines there from GTA 5. You know everything's being represented here from all the GTA uh, from all the Rockstar games that have come out so far. We got Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption 2 Domino set back there. Uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas like handkerchief back there. Uh, the cup and stuff. Uh, China uh, Wars, Vice City Soundtrack, Max Payne, all little buttons from the radio stations that are hanging around everywhere from the GTA series, Max Payne Bullet over there, the L.A. Noir pin set, you know, just a lot of cool stuff, Manhunt 2 and Midnight Club poster set sitting right there, uh, so just a lot of cool stuff in there as well. And here on the bottom shelf is used not for a specific uh, theme or game. It's more just Xbox stuff in general, games that I played on the Xbox and have an affiliation towards Xbox. So we got the uh, faceplate here. Really cool Zero Hour from November uh, 2005 when the Xbox 360 actually released. And some of the statues and stuff from that I associate Xbox games with, uh, like Tomb Raider and Assassin's Creed, because that's where I always played them. We got the Force of Five, um, you know, things like that, the gold coins, so... Really, really proud of that shelf um, and how it turned out. Uh, this, these three posters here in the center. This middle one got changed out from last year. This is now Super Mario Odyssey. Um, really, really great game on the Nintendo Switch. And, of course, we have an Xbox game on the left. And my favorite game on the PS4 or in, in PlayStation so far on the right. So that's why those are there. Now, what I did this year also that was a really big deal is I knew I wasn't going to be able to obviously get every single... Uh, collector's system not only because they're really expensive but because i don't have enough room for all of it so what i did instead is i got rid of all my basic consoles because i did have basic consoles in here and now they're all special edition consoles and they will be the my favorite special edition that they released for that i was for that platform so all of these systems have basically been changed out and that's what i did so here we got the wii u zelda edition over here we got the xbox one s gears of war edition over here we got the super smash brothers dock with the nintendo switch over here we got a, a 4k blu-ray player uh, over here we got the spider-man playstation 4 pro we got the headphones and stuff connected back there uh, over here we got the star wars r2d2 uh, xbox 360 we got the special edition japanese final fantasy playstation 3 we got the original Xbox Halo 2 that's completely modded with like a 2 terabyte drive with every single one of my Xbox games loaded on there. Thing is fully packed. Um, then we got the PlayStation 2 Silver up there. And of course my um, home theater uh, dead in. I forget the exact model. Oh, there it is. Uh, the AVX3300 fully 4K compatible. Dolby Atmos and stuff set up. Um, and the center channel speaker along with the GameCube um, that's sitting right there. So what I did with the speakers here before we forget, 
So we got the giant speaker over there, of course, giant speaker there, and the middle one, and the two on the sides like we always have, but this year we also added Adobe Atmos speaker, so you can see these two speakers sitting here right by the seats, pointing down and straight towards you, gives you the Atmos. If you guys have never heard Atmos before, it's crazy. Like, when it rains, if, if the movie supports Atmos and it starts raining or thunderstorming or an earthquake or something like that, my ceilings feel like they're going to fall apart. Uh, when I was watching the earthquake scene in San Andreas, that's something that you need to experience in Dolby Atmos because it literally sounds like from above you, everything is breaking, and it's just a great, great experience. Really added to the movies in the room. Over here on the other glass shelves, this is, of course, the PlayStation section. So, PlayStation section here, uh, we start at the top. We have the original uh, Twisted Metal Sweet Tooth ice cream chuck, so that's really cool. It's actually an RC car. It actually does have a controller in there brand new in the box uh it's not sealed because i don't believe in keeping anything sealed i did test it and stuff but it is in the box new because i bought it new like no one used it before me uh then we got the ratchet and clank uh vinyl series so that's really cool to add and then these little signs here that i really like that you saw over there with the xbox as well that i added and over here we got the um obviously naughty dog section so over here this is another shelf i'm really proud of all the Naughty Dog games are represented here in one way or another. We got The Last of Us figures along with The Brick. We got Crash Bandicoot. We got Nathan Drake. Uh, Uncharted. I'm sitting back here. The Lost Legacy with the cards. Uh, Drake's Fortune Notebook. We got the PlayStation Via Golden Abyss being represented. The art book back there. Um, we got the Crash Tag Team and the Uncharted 2 there. And then The Last of Us. Um, actual comic book and that art book back there I'm really proud to add to that art book because that art book is getting really hard to find it's getting real real expensive the art book of Naughty Dog it goes through all four of their series so Jack and Daxter's in there and stuff they go through all of it uh, really cool stuff really cool art that's in that book I'm really excited to add that sitting there and the next one here is my God of War section so God of War all the games that I that I've played in God of War are being represented we've got the new one back there with the poster uh, it looks like this actually fell. It's not supposed to be falling like that, but uh, you get the idea. Over here, my Kingdom Hearts shelf. As a big, big fan of Disney, of course I had to have a Kingdom Hearts shelf. Uh, so, really cool there. Got all these figures here. I like how this shelf came out as well with all the different Kingdom Hearts games that have released. And, of course, this last one is, again... Uh, generic PlayStation stuff of me representing just everything PlayStation that I like. We got the Spider Spider-Man Notebook. We got Horizon Zero Dawn figure. Uh, we got the Daily Bugle back there. We got the Yakuza series, the Buzz series, Spiral the Dragon, Killzone, Metal Gear Solid, uh, Days Gone, uh, all that stuff. We got some dog tags from SOCOM, uh, the PlayStation Experience when I went there, Little Big Planet of course, uh, the PlayStation VR glasses because I love VR. That's got to be represented in there as well. And then on top of the speaker, we just have a little Street Fighter, um, you know, representation there of the 25th anniversary box that's sitting there. Moving over here to this side, posters are exactly the same, but uh, this one I decided to do all Star Wars for the middle one because you're not going to find a lot of stuff from Mighty Ducks and Transformers has its own shelf down there, which we'll get to. So everything here is all Star Wars related. We did add some stuff to this uh, from last year. We added the R2-D2 here. Uh that you can actually, from Spear, uh, uh, what is it, Spiro, that you can actually remote control with your phone and stuff like that, so that's really cool. We added this one as well from Spiro, and this guy over here fell, so we'll have to fix him. We'll have to fix him later on. So yeah, that's the uh, Star Wars shelf sitting there with all the figures there. Now, over here, I did the exact same thing. I redid all of these shelves, and these are now... They used to be dedicated to nothing. Now they're dedicated to my favorite franchises than either movies or TV shows. And I'm really excited to have these shelves as well. This took a lot of work as well. And first one we have here is the Marvel shelf. So this is dedicated to all Marvel stuff. You can see uh, Captain America 3D Blu-ray sitting there, since that's the first movie that I've ever watched from, from the Marvel series. Uh, Agent Carter, I love that series, so I had to get some Agent Carter stuff sitting there. Uh, this thing is really cool. It actually does light up uh, from uh, Iron Man, of course. We got some Deadpool comics, the Marvel art book sitting back there. This Spider-Man from Spiro is freaking awesome. He literally has a conversation with you, play games with him. Like He really, really feels like a, a cool robot, so that thing is awesome. Um, 
from Guardians of the Galaxy, Hydra, of course, um, Black Panther, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. sitting back there, Captain Marvel. So some really cool stuff on that shelf from Marvel. And moving over, of course, right next to it is a DC shelf. And th just to mention, my 3D movies um, and stuff that I keep are actually behind there when I need to access them because um, I didn't really have any other spot for them. So they're kind of sitting back there. DC ones are sitting over there. Marvel ones sit back there. Uh, you know, Pixar stuff sits back there, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, this DC shelf here, of course, we got some representation from Batman Begins. We got the Batman or the DC comics back there, a picture of that. Um, so some really cool stuff on this shelf as well. Pixar shelf, really big fan of Pixar. So we got some Pixar stuff in here as well. Really happy with that poster there that says Pixar. That's framed. Um, and then the cars that's hiding back there is actually the uh, cars also from Spiro, the full car um, thing. That thing is remote control from your phone. Also, 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 I did a review on that thing if you guys want to check it out on the channel. Literally so cool. Makes you feel like you literally have a walking robot again in the room. It's just freaking awesome. Uh, over here is a horror theme since I'm a big fan of horror movies. We added some little uh, a horror shelf with uh, some of my favorite movies and the characters from all the different horror movies and stuff. So that came out pretty good. Over here is two of my favorite movies. So we got Jurassic Park and Avatar. Avatar created my obsession with 3D movies. So that had to be represented. And Jurassic Park is literally from my childhood and still watch those movies to this day. Over here, Transformers and Titanic. You can see the Transformers uh, um, um, figure here. Bumblebee, that figure is freaking awesome how that figure looks in person and the Titanic movie uh, with the actual jewel and the little note from the movie. So that's really cool. And Stranger Things, one of my favorite TV series of all time right now, right next to Game of Thrones um, as far as new stuff goes. And Eleven is represented there with the Egos and stuff. Some really cool stuff. The Dormagorgon bat that they had on the show. We got a t-shirt there. This is actually signed by uh, one of the cast members in there. Um, so that's awesome. And then here we got some favorite, my fa some of my favorite TV shows. We talked about Boy Meets World up there, Family Guy, and uh, Don't Hate, but um, this thing fell over here. But yes, I'm a big fan of uh, the Hannah Montana show. I was obsessed with that show when that show was out. Um, so that is there as well. No hating. Um, something else that is over here, uh, is the Disney Infinity stuff. So we got that sitting over here. Um, and that sign sitting over here. Uh, the other important thing in this room is this thing right here. So this is an iPad mini that's on the wall. This controls basically the whole entire room. So you can come in here and you can see that it's right now listed on movie room. So if I change movie room and I decide to go to the game room, I can turn anything on in the game room. You can see right now it's on watch YouTube. If I want to go back to the movie room, it's just one click button. So when people are over, so if they want to play like the PlayStation 4 or listen to music or play the Xbox 360 or whatever the case may be, you just tap that button and everything that needs to happen happens. The lights turn off, uh, that comes down, the projector turns itself on and everything, you know, the system turns on, the projector turns on back there and everything is just ready to go. It sets itself to the right input. And if you need to change the volume or anything like that while you're playing, you can tap the screen right here, change the volume, all that cool stuff. And it's all connected to my Apple Home Kit for my smart home. So I can access my doorbell from here, you know, look at the cameras in the house and all that stuff, all listed here while sitting on here. Uh, so that's really cool and really makes this room come together. It makes it really easy to use. And we have that on the wall from Philips Hue just in case to turn the lights on and off if you guys want to just do it simple when you come here and not have to touch that. There's still that as well. So this couch, of course, that we got, same couch as last year. Uh, is a movie theater couch and really cool. It's got these buttons on here so you can obviously light up the cup holder. You can move the uh, neck thing back and forth or you can move the legs up there back and forth. And what I did this year that's different from last year is that I wanted to represent my controllers as well. Like it was not, I, there was no way I was going to have all these consoles that were going to be represented, all the special editions. And I wasn't going to somehow represent the controllers because I wanted to have these special controllers out for people to see and people to, you know, play with and stuff. So I have my favorite special edition controllers for consoles that are in this room. So you got the Zelda one for the Nintendo, uh, Nintendo Wii, you got the Super Smash Bros. one for the Wii U, the Spider-Man one for the PS4, the Gears of War one for the Xbox 3, uh, Xbox One, 
the white one that matches the PlayStation 4 Final Fantasy over or PlayStation 3 Final Fantasy. That is the Star Wars one that goes with the Xbox 360, and of course the Wade Wave Bird for the GameCube. And cool here because this actually moves out if you want to, and you can actually do this, and you can connect some USB ports and stuff on here if you want. And this does flip up, and you can even uh, turn the lights on down here, so you have a little light coming from up above if you're dark in this room and uh, want to eat and have some light on there. So that is there as well. Uh, so I think that is everything in this room as far as the movie room. So a lot of a lot of cool changes. Obviously, most of it co like collectibles and these consoles. This room was what I would consider, like I said, basically done to my liking. I have no plans of touching anything anytime, in, like you know, anytime soon. I wouldn't even know what to touch because I think it looks really, really good right now. Um, the only thing that I will be doing in the future, uh, which is a project of mine for the towards the end of this year, maybe in the summertime is this area right here so this is the dividing door there's no door there anymore but this is the dividing area that goes from the movie room to the game room and what i'm thinking about doing is i always wanted a hidden room in the house and a lot of people actually come here and since this flag is in the way and they get so excited about this movie room they don't even know that something else is on the other side of that they're always like amazed on how big it is when they open that curtain and how big everything is, which you guys are about to see. So what I think I'm going to do at the end of this year is I think I'm going to um, build some sort of bookcase or something like people do for a secret door. Uh, and I'll put a bookcase there and that will give me some more room for, for, movie, for movie collectibles and stuff. So we'll have some more random collectibles from all different movies because I'll put some on shelves. And there will be like a secret book or something that, or a secret thing that you touch that will open the door and it will just look like it's part of this room. It will be like a like a shelf that looks like it's built in as much as possible, as uh, you know that we can think of here, and add some more room for collectibles, and also makes it seem like this room is completely closed off. And then add some cool little push button to let it open. Have my little uh, secret door that I've always wanted since I was a kid. Uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do over here. So just future ideas for you guys to take a look. Uh, what you can expect this year. That's the only thing that's being planned to add to this room. So everything else is 100% great. So anyway, next room is, of course, the game room side. So there's a lot to see in this room. Uh, I'm going to try to go to it as quickly as I can. We're already running at 30 minutes from just the movie room, which is ridiculous. Um, so here is my PC setup area. Most of the electronics are the same. The two monitors. Uh, I did get a 4K monitor sitting over there. Uh, the keyboard and mouse are, of course, all the same. That setup over here is all the same, representing some of my favorite PC franchises, like Overwatch and Destiny that I play on here, and some signs, the Oculus Rift sign. Uh, big fan of VR, like I said. Um, this is a clock that I added that um, basically tells me my subscriber count. It gets me motivated and stuff when, I edit, when I'm editing videos. We got the Gears of War 3 sign thing that's signed by the whole entire cast, including Kiffy B that made the actual game. Um, some cool signs over here. Um, over here is the Oculus Rift S. Um, this is my headphones that I use, the Razer headset that I use. Some Xbox 360 controllers along with the VR controllers. Here's another one of those bucket list things that I added to the front. This is the video game one that I have to actually play through before I can check off. Uh, this is an ultra wide monitor. Like I said, that one's a 4K. This one's an ultra wide one. We got some pop figures sitting over there in the corner. Um, and over here is something that was added this year as well. I got rid of my regular chair. And this is a Marvel chair. So this is Marvel Spider Man. Really comfortable chair. Really fun to use. Really happy with that. And something that I literally did a review on this uh, last this month actually um, that I just recently got is this. Um, wheel. So I actually have a wheel stand from Wheel Stand Pro. So check that video out if you want to see it. If it's easily down there when I'm not using it and when I want to use it, I can just take it out in five seconds and have my wheels ready to go to play some PC games in 4K or play some VR games uh, with a racing wheel. So that's a lot of fun. Really easy to put that away. Um, so that's really cool. And over here in the corner, I actually have uh, right there is the VR gun, so I can actually take these two and make it into like a gun form. I did a video with that as well on the channel, so it really feels like you're holding a gun in VR and really makes you, you know, like the game even more. So moving on over here is uh, the shelves. So this room, uh, the game room, is probably what's going to get the, uh, it's going to get the second, you know, the second attention basically. Uh, and the reason that I say that is because 
even though you see most of this is already done and I did make a lot of changes this year, there are some things I still want to do and that is to fill some of these shelves, especially like for example, this first one up here that has nothing on it. Uh, just fill it with more little collectibles and stuff, kind of like what you see on here, how this shelf looks really good with all the Mario uh, collectibles and stuff. That's kind of what I want to do to some of the other shelves. But you can see some of my collection here from the Virtual Boy. We got the Vetrex there, the Atari, the Intellivision here. There is my NES collection of games. So the games are really represented well. I like how, how they are organized and showing off some of my favorite games from the, like the Sega Genesis and stuff, which looks really good. Showing off some of those. So I like the way the games are represented. I just want to have more collectibles. This is uh, the third shelf. Obviously, this one being all Nintendo related stuff in this side of the room now. So you can see here, uh, got the little Nintendo sign just like the other room. Added some collectibles to the top. And this is, you know, the Mario shelf. Just basic Mario related items. Um, so you can see here the little statue there. It looks really good. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show. The Thank You Mario Notebook. The two Nintendo Power magazines, the first one and the last one, sealed. Uh, sorry, not sealed. I don't keep anything sealed, like, in the package, but not sealed. Like, I actually read through those. Um, so that's really cool. Next shelf, of course, that we have here is the Zelda shelf. You can see that how Zelda's represented with some of the figurines, some of the soundtracks and stuff from Margarita of Time. Um, Pokemon shelf, red, blue, and green. Uh, Pokemon 2DS is sitting back there, so that's cool. Uh, there's the Pokemon um, Special Edition Game Boy. And then here is just random stuff, Nintendo. The shelf uh, needs some work still, needs to add some more stuff to it, but we do got the Luigi's Mansion uh, figurine, the Metroid thing, uh, Kirby, Super Smash Brothers soundtrack, uh, Game & Watch. So this shelf, I would say, is like 75% done. There's still a couple of collectibles I need to put in certain places, but uh, I like the way that that shelf is coming out. Um, here is the 3DO, 32X games and stuff. Like I said, these shelves are really empty compared to how many collectibles I have now on the other shelves that it's kind of making me annoyed to look at, like, how bland this shelf is. For example, the Sega Saturn and stuff. Really, really good games on the shelf, though, which is obviously the most important thing. But definitely want to add some Sega collectibles sitting on that shelf. Uh, this is my Super Nintendo shelf. My N uh, more Super Nintendo right here. N64 shelf. I started adding the tags this year to the end so I can actually see what games they are. It makes them stand out too. I really like how they look. Really easy to pick them out. And my PlayStation self shelf sitting, sitting down there. Moving over here. Dreamcast. One of my favorite systems of all time. Uh, GameCube. Uh, handheld shelf. So you can see we got some Game Gear stuff in there. Some um, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, so, and those Game Boys sitting up there look pretty good. Nintendo DS, this is a freaking awesome game right here, the Little Red Riding Hood Zombie Barbecue, freaking awesome. Uh, so we got some of that there, 3DS sitting there. And we got my PSP collection over here with these two PSPs and my Vita sitting over here in the corner. And my Nintendo Wii collection there. This shelf over here is the one that I'm that also needs to be worked on. This is my Sega shelf. This is newly being done since I this is basically where the 90s stuff was. Uh, on this shelf and I was able to move it all to that wall over there, which is a much much better situation um, So that's why this shelf is now being started and basically pretty empty. There is some cool stuff on the shelf though We got the retro gamer uh, This is gonna be my sonic shelf. Of course the 25th anniversary. There's a lot of cool stuff I want to add to there. This is gonna be my Genesis shelf You can see the Genesis mini is already sitting there the mutant league hockey hat Which is awesome that I found from back in the day comic zone sitting back there this will obviously be my Saturn uh, shelf and stuff like that. And a uh, Dreamcast shelf sitting there at the bottom. So, found a little third, 30, three Dirty Dwarves poster and stuff in there. So, this, these shelves, of course, need to get added to. Here's my PS2 collection up there and down here. More PS2 games over here. Here's the original Xbox. I love the original Xbox. And over here, we just got some art books and magazines and my CD scratch fixer. Uh, over here, 
We got a couple of 90s things that couldn't fit on those shelves up there that are kind of here, like the phone. And over here we got a lot of just random stuff that doesn't really have a spot in any way. Uh, this is like three cases that I store stuff that I don't ever really use, um, but can be in there. Uh, I actually store my TV things in there, like the TV th plugins that you plug into the TV. Those things that they always sell at Walmart and stuff for like 20 bucks uh, that have like one or two games on it. Those are sitting in there as well uh, if I ever want to play them. These shelves are all organized uh, with the controllers for each system for the retro area. So you can see the Dreamcast controller, PS1, stuff like that, uh, the guns and stuff. So those are all sitting here ready to go uh, for whenever I want to play one of these systems for all the controllers. So this area got some attention as well. Obviously, you can see the big thing is now we have two TVs. There was only one here before. Before, it was just a retro TV. Now we're looking at the retro TV on the left, and now... Um, we got the PlayStation TV, the PlayStation 3D TV sitting over here, which is currently running the um, PlayStation uh, unit there. That is really cool. Uh, that was also added this year. Uh, these three things here are really cool as well. Uh, basically, these are called TV talkers that a lot of the people liked in the 90s. You basically, if you point your controller at it, any IR sensor will do. And it just says funny things while you're actually, you know... Watching TV when you change the channel, that was always like the thing, and they would say stupid things like, Hey, why are you changing the channel? Like, oh, this channel's stupid, you know, those kind of things. Uh, South Park One Family Guy and Beavis and Butthead. Um, we had a little Zelda back there with the Zelda shield and stuff, and the poster here. And the consoles uh, all got rearranged, uh, but they're still basically the same, only a couple of new ones so far. Um, so we see here we got the Super Nintendo, of course, the NES, the 3DO, uh, the Intellivision, um, the Sega Saturn, the Genesis, N64, Pikachu Edition, uh, that Dreamcast there, which I'm actually going to be trading in to get the sports edition of it instead, since that's actually a special edition. Like I said, I'm trying to get special editions of each system that makes sense, hence why that N64 is there, and the Dreamcast will be swapped. Uh, we got the Crystal Xbox over there, the original Xbox Crystal Edition, and uh, the Xbox 360 Halo Edition, the Wii, PlayStation 1, the Xbox 360 Halo 4 Edition, we got the PlayStation Mini, uh, we got a VCR and DVD so we can watch our old school, you can see them up there, uh, where I have the VCRs uh, from some of my favorite movies, we got them up here as well for the Pokemon series, all hiding up there. Um, so we can watch some VCR and, and DVDs on these TVs, uh, whether it be on the retro TV for VCR or DVD on this one. Um, and we got the PlayStation Classic, uh, hiding somewhere. I know it's in there. Um, this is all the inputs, so I know exactly what to hit for all the inputs and stuff. That was all redone with the wiring and stuff much easier. Everything is labeled back there, so if something gets wrong with the power with one of the systems, they're now all labeled as opposed to the way it was before. PlayStation 3, of course, sitting up here, uh, where you can actually play 3D games on here now, since this is the Sony PlayStation 3D TV. And the reason there's so many TVs in the house as well, something to mention, which I'll get into at the end of the video, but just a quick thing, is that, like, we play a lot of LAN parties in here. Well, not a lot. We do it sometimes. So now we got a retro TV that we can connect systems to, like the original Xbox or the 360 if we need to. We got this TV over here. Uh, we got that TV in the corner, and we got the projector. So two people over here and two people over there so for some 2v2 LAN play. So... That's where the idea came from. Over here is newly added as well. This is where an arcade unit used to be, which is no longer with us. That has been gotten rid of, and we'll get to that later. But uh, now I add a little Vegas corner to this area. Uh, I always wanted a slot machine, uh, like an actual slot machine in the house, and this is uh, one from Japan. Really, really cool. Fully works, and uh, we have some money on there right now. You can see that you can spin. Really cool because it actually plays like you're trying to, right now he's playing like a catch thing. And you can see, you know, how much you win. So I won seven coins on that one. And if I do a max bet again, I can spin again. So it's really entertaining to watch that little screen, see what's going to happen next. And that's really cool. And I haven't actually hit jackpot on this thing. I got this thing recently. The guy who had it said that the jackpot, this thing goes freaking crazy. The lights go off on the top, starts ringing bells all over the place. It's literally insane. So, um, And then some, some board game stuff sitting next to it. 
I still need to buy a couple of things here. Like, I want to hide this window with a, either some sort of frame or some sort of poster or something. Comment if you guys have any ideas on what it should be. That can kind of go back there. Um, and then this is just the chair, and that's the remote for the PlayStation. Um, here is my board game collection, of course. Uh, I've shown this, obviously, in the past. Obviously, new games added all the time. Uh, big fan of board games here as well. Uh, I'm not going to show you every shelf, because that would be crazy. But the only thing I will tell you is that they're all organized. So, like, over here, they start with, like, the two-player games. And these are four-player, five-player, six-player, and then anything above six players over there. So, it's easy when people come over, depending on how many people I have, what games to actually play. Standing over here by the board game area, this is really cool. This is a Wi-Fi thing that I made. People come over and they just scan that to connect to my Wi-Fi. Uh, board game posters. This is really cool. Even though it's running a little low on some of the snacks, but this is my board game snack. So when people are over here on the table playing with the board games, they can just come over here and eat some snacks and stuff. Um, over here, we got some just some board game related things. Over here is a speaker that we use, and that's a speaker, the JBL speaker that we use for board game nights and stuff. And this is a board game that I did a review on as well, a drop mix from Harmonix. Basically, it's a music-driven game, and you can play whatever card you play, you can actually you know mix some music and stuff really cool people get a lot of entertainment that's why it's out when they're over just slapping some cards on there and seeing what kind of mixes you can actually make and that's more board game stuff as well uh dartboard over here uh fully digital dartboard uh has uh, i forget how many games like over 100 games on there really really cool some nintendo labo stuff in a nintendo labo customized box that i made just to keep them there a uh, rock band drums and this is a little bar corner and stuff, as you can see. Uh, we changed up what's actually on here. Uh, so we got the Star Wars, or sorry, Star Wars. We got the Vetrex sitting on here that used to be in that corner where people couldn't actually play. Now we got it running Space Wars here, one of my favorite games on the Vetrex system with two controllers sitting there. Um, and we got the little Pac-Man ColecoVision thing. We got the Virtual Boy that can be played here. We got the iCade sitting right here that you can play with the old iPad. It's an iPad 2 that's sitting there. You can play some of those classic games that don't no longer work because they were never updated to work past iOS uh, 10. So, and then the PSVR is actually sitting right there. Um, and we got some two devil's chairs and a little bar area and stuff. So some really, uh, so I like the way that this has turned out to look compared to what it looked like last year. And actually is usable now when people come over and sit on these chairs and uh, do that. Over here, of course, is my actual TV. Uh, this is a 4K TV. This is also new for the area. This is a, now a 49-inch 4K TV that we added to over here. Um, and it's really awesome because now I have all my 4K consoles. Kind of, I play them over here because uh, this, obviously, 4K TV looks a little bit... Definitely looks better than uh, an HDR, especially than the projector over there. That was a 4K enhanced projector, which still looks better than 1080p, but not quite as good as this 4K projector, or sorry, 4K screen from Samsung. So anything that's over there on that side that I showed you as far as the systems go in the movie room can also be played over here very easily. Um, I could use my phone or the iPad in the other room to turn things on, and it will switch over here in five seconds. Um, so any of the systems over there are plugged in, but I also have some over here. You can see the Xbox 4K is sitting over here, another original Xbox sitting over here. The PSVR setup obviously gets played over here. Um, and we got a little mini fridge over here. Some of the accessories that I need, like uh, DJ Hero or the Nintendo Switch drum game that we have there. Um, the Rock Band guitar, another DJ Hero controller, so we got the Kinect Xbox 360, so really happy with the fact that we actually opened up this area. I used to have a ping pong table here. Now this area is completely open, so I can move these little couch things here in five seconds, and I can come here and play 360 Kinect games or the other uh, Xbox Kinect games. Uh, you can also play the PS3 Connect games or PlayStation Move. Sorry, not Connect, PlayStation Move, uh, and really easy to play VR and stuff. So it just makes us a much better space to be actually be able to play things, especially like Rock Band and stuff, which was hard to do before. Here's my Devil's Wall with a bunch of memorabilia. As a big Devil's fan, of course. And speaking of a little thing here, so here's more controllers that now go on this side for the systems that I play the most on this side. So we got the Xbox One. Uh, Gears of War controller, we got the PlayStation 4 uh, classic controller, Mario Wii controller, uh, we got the uh, God of War PlayStation 3, Gears of War Xbox 360, and the Splatoon Nintendo Switch.
And these things right here are freaking awesome. This is uh, basically the best beanbag chair you can ever buy. They're called Yogabas. And you can see here I even added these little cup holders and stuff that actually do work. They don't actually fall off. Added one row to the back so people can come here, relax, you know, play a game over here or whatever. And very easily, you know, play games together. We can play Jackbox on here and stuff like that very easily. Party games are perfect on here. When we have more than four people that just don't fit in the movie room, we can all come here and play games as well. Also, the fact that this is uh, this whole rug area is these things come off in five seconds and I can put them to the side. Unlike the ping pong table, this is now obviously where we play VR as well. Uh, so I have this gigantic space to play in VR with no issues at all. And it takes me two seconds to be able to play it, which kind of discouraged me back in the day to play it because I had to take the whole ping pong table down, fold it up. Obviously a lot more. This is five seconds worth of work now. So really happy that that change was made as well. Uh, some of the other things in the center room here that we didn't talk about is the Super Checks. This is a customized one, Devils vs. Rangers. This thing is freaking awesome. If you're a fan of bubble hockey, I love this thing. Um, I wish I got more play from people, but, you know, obviously it's a two-player game that you can't play by yourself, so. And the last thing we're going to talk about in this room is these two chairs. So this is really, uh, really cool. I can connect these to any of the things that are coming out of any of these two um, TVs in two seconds I can go ahead and turn these on and you'll get some 2.1 surround sound the chair rumbles and stuff and you got the speakers here on the left and right side uh, with a subwoofer inside so each chair is 2.1 and you get some much better sound than what that TV is going to do or this TV is going to do when you're playing either retro games or new games so that is awesome um, I think that is everything in this room guys oh and of course I showed this table before but this is the board game table that we play on we got that customized can even spill stuff on the table and it sucks it right up and it doesn't damage the table so that's awesome that i don't have to worry about people spilling stuff on the table it's never actually happened so i don't know if it actually does what it says but that is what they advertise the table as and i think that is everything in this room guys so um as i said a lot of changes in this uh not as many changes as in the other room but definitely some cool changes with those two tvs and the uh, change over there with uh 4k tv of course uh the little bar area got changed we added the uh um, slot machine over there so definitely some cool cool changes and these projects that I'm working on with the glass shelves and the shelves around it so some more stuff to come in this room as far as collectibles go so of course the last thing I was working on the last three months which I actually did, just did a dedicated video on right before this and we won't go completely into detail because there is a separate video for the arcade room on here as well but let is, let's go ahead and go into the arcade room you can see the entrance here so this is the brand new arcade room. Really, really happy with the way that this room turned out. You guys can see the overview of this thing. This came out so, so good. Much better than I thought. My wife says it's her favorite room in the house. Or not in the house, in the basement, I should say, as far as everything down here. Um, so, real quick, uh, we'll go through it really fast. Like I said, there's a dedicated video if you guys want to see it. Uh, over here, we got some lights around some of my favorite marquee games from arcades. And we added some Pac-Man curtains. And the reason that we did that is, of course, because this was a laundry room before. So the laundry room is obviously still there. The only difference is, is that now we have the laundry room and, uh, you know, hidden by curtains. And it's, you know, the washer and dryer behind there. So you don't even see it when you're in here. But they are still there. Uh, the, one of the more recent things that I just did to this room is add this pinball machine. Uh, this is a 27-inch Playfield uh, 4K monitor. So this is a 4K monitor around here. And this is a 19-inch screen up top, 1080p or 720p for that screen. Little pinball white sign that actually just came in today, actually. The little pinball sign, it does it is lit up. All the buttons here are lit up and stuff like that on both sides. Everything is labeled for what they actually do. And uh, this is uh, basically done. I'm just adding more and more tables as I go. There's only like 78 tables on it so far. But just a lot of tables to play and have all the custom artwork for all this stuff. So really cool when you swipe through and just look at all the artwork and all that stuff. So this thing has been so much fun to play. Uh, really perfect size because I couldn't get a full-size pinball machine because it would have obviously never fit in this room. And this is a perfect, perfect compromise. Uh, it feels just as good for me as a real pinball machine. And I have no complaints. It feels perfect and a perfect, perfect size for what I was looking for in this room. And this is from... Um, I did a full review on this one as well. This is from Game Room Solutions. 
Go ahead and check them out if you want to see my actual thoughts on the machine and what I think about their uh, customer service. FYI, it ain't very good. Um, so, yeah, that machine. And then these are my arcade one-up machines. Um, you can see my signs up there on the top. We got the Golden Tee arcade machine. We got the Marvel one. Ninja Turtles. Rampage Star Wars. We got some stools here. We got the Star Wars stool. We got these signs up here. So, uh, my theory with this room when I first started it is I wanted each arcade machine to have a purpose in here. Because as you can see, this is a main cabinet and it has every game you could think of. Over 80,000 games are on this machine. Um, so I wanted this all to have a purpose. Originally, I didn't know I was going to get this machine. I thought I was going to keep my old machine that I had in last year's video. But I didn't. So that's why I got this Golden Tee machine. But they're actually coming out with a new Golden Tee machine that actually has a bowling game on it that hasn't been released in any way, shape, or form that isn't on this cabinet either. So I'll be swapping that out with that when that comes out. So that's why this is here, because it was a trackball game. So that's going to stay here um, for good. This is Marvel-related, and I wanted some Marvel arcade machine in here, and that's why that is in here. This is a four-player game for Ninja Turtles, so four-player game is obviously not what this is. So that's why that four-player game is in here. Uh, this will probably be replaced by NBA Jam at some point at the end of the year. Rampage is special because it's a three-player setup. So, obviously, again, different than what this machine can do. And this speaks for itself. This is Star Wars with the specific control. So, obviously, that's very different. So, I just wanted all of them to stand out uh, for one reason or another compared to this machine. Because this machine here is freaking great. This is a 32-inch uh, Rec Room Masters arcade machine. You can see it has literally everything. So, we got a two-player setup. We got the buttons here for two players. The, uh, we got the LED buttons for all the menus. Uh, we got the trackball that's lit up. We got a spinner over here in the corner. We got a four-way joystick. You can even open up this flap here. And whip out the keyboard that's in here so you can get any and, and access to volume controls okay. really easily. So you can do that. And of course we got the uh, light guns that we can use. So we got two light guns so we can play all the uh, arcade light gun games on here. We got two Xbox 360 controllers, so for any games that obviously can't use Xbox controllers, then we got that set, or sorry, that can't use arcade controls, then we got those set up. Like I said, there is there is a lot of games on here. Uh, there's just a collection of everything on here. Um, you know, everything from MAME. Like I said, there's over 80,000 games on here. I did a, a full review on this one as well if you guys want to see more in detail uh, as far as a review on how that one goes. Uh, completely customized with this artwork, Street Fighter, of course, as you can see there on the side, and of course with the Street Fighter, since my wife is a really big Street Fighter fan, she really wanted that in this room. And this machine also can play not just light gun games, but I also have DDR pads there, so we can play full step mania and DDR games on here, So it's, and even have two microphones hiding in that door back there that you can play basically a bunch of karaoke games and a bunch of karaoke songs that I added, so karaoke machine, uh, DDR machine, light gun machine, 80,000 games. This is like literally an all-in-one machine. Um, so this machine is freaking awesome. And this is a fridge that we have in here for regular fridge purposes, but we decided to paint it with chalkboard paint, and now we use it for high scores, so it actually looks like it actually fits in here. And we keep track of high scores in the room, so that's really cool. And a couple of little signs, and this is the music JBL speaker that we use when we play music in here, and has really cool light effects that match the perfect vibe of this room. And of course we got this little thing right here for a gumball machine. And of course we got these disco uh, lights over here, which is what's spinning around the room that we use in here. And the last thing is the floor. Everyone talks about these floors. These floors are freaking awesome. Really gives the arcade vibe. I believe they're at like a bowling, uh, bowling uh, place kind of like carpet that they actually had. But um, yeah, so that is the arcade room. Uh, really, really proud of how all of this stuff turned out. And it really, really turned out well. If you guys want to see this stuff more in detail, like I said, definitely check out my full review of that. So, guys, that basically is my full game room. Uh, just a couple of quick tips here at the end. Um, my whole idea with having a game room, if you guys don't know, is that I actually love to entertain people. And I love to have different things for people to do. Uh, that has always been what I, what drives me in my head and what I plan to do. Obviously, I have to like it as well, but I always want to 
entertain people when they come over and have them be able to do different things. So, the arcade room has a million different things to do. You can play karaoke, you can play DDR, you can play the main arcade machine, you can play all those other machines in there, you can play a pinball arcade machine, you can come in here, you can watch a movie, play all those systems, you know, come over here, read a magazine, grab some candy, stuff like that. Come in this room, you got a PC, you can play PC games in 4K, you know, you can come over here, uh, do some, um, you know, VR-related stuff. I got an Oculus Quest upstairs as well. It's not down here. Um, you know, we got the Nintendo Switch. We got two Nintendo Switches because I like to, you know, be able to play with my wife or people who come over. That's why we had the LAN setup I was talking about before. So people can come over here. They can hang out, play some Rock Band down here, play some PlayStation VR, whatever you want to do. Hang out at the bar, play some of these uh, systems on here as well. You got a dart board over here. You know, uh, now you got a slot machine. You got these two TVs. It, there's uh, a lot of different things that people can actually do when they come down here. So everyone can be doing their own thing. That's basically what I'm always looking for. To entertain people and have a bunch of different things to do when they actually come over. And that's always been my goal. And I think the game room is the best it's ever been in 2020 as far as that goes and how good it looks and stuff. Like I said, the movie room for plans for an early peek of what you guys should expect uh, as far as changes go. For 2020 and beyond uh that i'll be doing like i said the 90s room uh, the 90s area up here something i'm still concentrating on to doing the arcade room is basically done the only thing that the arcade room needs is i might swap a couple of those machines out like i said with the nba jam replacing the tmt and the other uh machine that i was talking about but that's not going to change the look of the room that's just a different machine so that doesn't really mean much as far as a new room tour but uh, something to keep an eye on. This room, like I said, is 99% done. Uh, the only thing I want to do is that at the end of the year, and I think that will be really, really cool to show off. So I'll definitely be documenting that, and that will let me add some more collectibles and stuff. Uh, over here, um, a lot of collectibles that need to get added to these shelves and stuff that I want to do, and I want to finish that little corner with putting something behind there just to wrap that up. But other than that, this room is also, you know, 90% done, minus the collectibles on the shelves and stuff. This is at a really good point. So... I say this every year that I think the game room's not going to change a lot. Um, and I'm always wrong at the end of the year. And I was wrong again this year. As you guys can tell, it was a lot of changes. But um, I, I think we're at a stage where, you know, we're not. it's not going to be a drastic change anymore. Except for this thing that's going to go on the wall. That will definitely be a drastic change. And I'm excited for that project towards the end of the year. But um, we'll see. I mean, there's always you're always going to see new stuff in the room. That's for sure. I'm always adding collectibles and stuff. So we'll see how the year progresses. But this is going to be my biggest project for the year. And maybe concentrating on getting that 90s wall completely full at some point. So, um, so guys, I think that is everything in the game room. If you guys have any questions, as always, of anything you guys have seen today, leave it down below. If not, thank you guys for watching. Till next time. Tech, gaming tech, is the gaming tech, gaming techie, gaming tech, eating brekkie, is the gaming tech, going for a brekkie, is the gaming tech, gaming tech, is the gaming tech, gaming tech.